Easy Atmos is your all-in-one tool for adding dynamic atmospherics to your Unreal Engine environments. From drifting leaves, bug swarms, dust, smoke and sparks, dense local fog, and even crumbling rock formations, all of which are controlled through a single artist-friendly blueprint. Place the blueprint in your level, and with the drop-down menu, you can switch between any of these Atmos systems and art direct them from there. What's the benefit of having Easy Atmos over another VFX pack? There's no more juggling between a variety of Niagara systems or cluttering your content browser with duplicate variations. Settings that can be keyframed and animated to your liking. You can even create your own presets once you've found a setup that you like. It is optimized for real-time and cinematic usage, so it just works and makes a huge difference to the visual impact of any of your levels. All of the effects here are based on real-world examples. You'll find Easy Atmos on Fab, link down below. So let's get right into it. Let me show you why Easy Atmos should be a part of your toolbox, how to use it, and what you can do with it. The first step to using Easy Atmos is to navigate to the Blueprint folder here and drop it into your level. Next, there's a drop-down menu here called Atmos Type. Each type will give you a starting point to get the effects you want, whether that's local fog or bug swarms or hanging dust or smoke or sparks or really anything. It is very straightforward and that leads me to the next part, which is presets. I want to explain the preset functionality a little bit. You have a list of presets here you can use as a starting point. When you load a preset, it will fire up all of the appropriate settings here for that desired effect. You're going to want this to match your Atmos type. So use the local fog preset for the local fog type, use the leaves preset for the leaves type, so on and so forth. When a preset is loaded, all of these settings below get locked and you cannot change them. The purpose of the preset is to provide you with a starting point and load some good starting values for a desired effect. So after you load the preset and you want to continue art directing an effect, simply tick the reset button here to remove it and you can continue changing your settings down below as desired. If you're unhappy with one of the defaults, let's say the spawn radius of your local fog is way too small and you always want it bigger, you can change that. Double click the preset icon here and a new window will pop up with all of the default values of that preset. Set it to a value you like, hit save, and now those values will always be in place when you use that preset. You also have the ability to create your own presets entirely. Click here to find the preset in the content browser, right click on it and duplicate. That will create your own named preset. Open it up, Set the preset value to your liking and then save. That will allow you to load your own custom preset in the list here instead of using the default ones. You don't need to stick with the default preset. You can do all kinds of creative stuff with the variables you have access to. Every type has its own menu for additional customization. It's how you get this kind of angle grinder spark effect. That is how I got this rocky effect or even the rubber bouncy thingies. You have total freedom to customize things as you like. The Atmos types and its default presets are really just a starting point for you. Now, moving on, the custom mesh option is one of my favorites because it opens up a lot of flexibility. It is what I use to make this crumbling rock shot here in the easiest possible way. Simply find a mesh that you want to use. You can also add a custom material to that mesh here too. From there, you have the same options we had for all of the other Atmos types, with the exception of having more control over the collision, actually. You can fine tune how bouncy the mesh is to really sell the effect you're going for, whether it's rubber or something harder and heavier like stone. It really helps sell the weight of an object. You can also control the amount of friction and bounce friction each particle has. Play around with these settings to get a feel of what they do. And you'll see, it's a lot of fun to play with. To nail this rockfall shot you saw in the intro here was by using a combination of effects. I have a few easy Atmos blueprints in the level here, as you can see. One with larger rocks, medium rocks, and smaller pebble-sized rocks. I then added another blueprint with the smoke type selected to add even more ambience to the shot because, you know, when you have that many rocks falling, it's going to create quite a bit of dust in the air. That is how you can use easy Atmos to create impressive visuals. You can also keyframe the start and stopping of these rocks or smoke or bug swarms or whatever for 
let's say a player enters a part of the cave and that triggers a rock slide. That segues perfectly into the next part of the tutorial, animating variables and optimizations. So let's talk about animating the effects. I give you the possibility to keyframe variables, starting and stopping the effects, or keyframing wind variation for cinematics or even gameplay purposes. Here is the workflow. Animation is done through Sequencer. So with the sequence loaded here, drag and drop Easy Atmos into your sequence. You'll see here we now have some diamonds that are next to the variables that are allowed to be keyframed. Click on that and that will set a keyframe here in Sequencer. I'm going to set the Atmos state values, which is what controls the global on or off amount. The first keyframe will be set to zero. And here I'm going to place a second keyframe with the value of one. So we're going to see a gradual increase of particles over time. Now, before we do anything else, it is really important to realize that for performance reasons, I set the default tick rate to be zero. You'll find the tick rate in the optimizations menu here. The tick rate is important because that is what allows the change in variable values at runtime or when you render. So you're going to want to set that to be at least your desired frame rate. And for good measure, I'm just going to set it to 60. If you don't need to animate anything and you just want things to loop, I recommend leaving it at zero for best performance. So if I move the playhead here, nothing shows up because the Atmos state is at the zero. And by moving it here, you'll see the particles show up again as intended. But you'll notice that when I press play in the sequence here, nothing happens, nothing shows up, but don't worry, that is entirely normal. It just has to do with the way that the blueprint construction script runs in the viewport. It restarts with every frame, but I promise you that at runtime or when you render with the movie render queue, everything will be animated as expected. You will not see this weird behavior. So with that said, I wanna talk a little bit about troubleshooting some issues. In general, you shouldn't be having any bugs or problem with Easy At Mode because it is not a complex system with a lot of moving parts, but there are a few things I wanna make you aware of. Easy Atmos relies on mesh distance fields for quite a few things like collision, for example. So if you don't see anything at all showing up, it is likely that that is the root cause. You just need to make sure that mesh distance fields are enabled in your project settings. By default, it should be. If you're using the movie render queue and you notice that some things are not showing up at render time, remember that you might need some warm-up frames. In the anti-aliasing tab of movie render queue, make sure enough warm-up frames are added. And for good measure, tick the render warm-up frames checkbox. That will make sure that the particles have had enough time to spawn correctly and be in place by the time your frames get rendered to disk. If there's any other issue that I discover through your feedback, I'll be sure to add the solution to the pinned comment down here below. And that's it, folks. I hope you found the video helpful. Again, you can find Easy Atmos on Fab at the link down below. If you're happy with the tool, please leave a rating on Fab. It takes only a second and it really goes a long way. For any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to help you out and hear your feedback. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as always, folks, happy rendering.